I have a confession to make. I suck at using Apple Motion. It's something I'm working on becoming better at because I know how useful it can be. And if you're wondering what the hell is Apple Motion and why is it useful, my buddy Dylan here, who is awesome at using the software, is gonna give you five reasons why you should start using it. Hey friends, my name is Dylan Bates and I am the Final Cut Bro. I am so stoked to be on the Better Dylan's channel today, so thank you Dylan for having me. If you happen to have seen any of my videos on my channel, you may know that I make a lot of Motion 5 content in tandem with my Final Cut Pro content. So today I wanted to show you five reasons why you really need to be using Motion if you're not already. The first reason is right when you open up Motion, you have all of these options, titles, generators, transitions, and effects. All of these can be used to actually create your own specific plugins for your videos. So I use this all of the time for really dramatically speeding up my workflow because if there is something that I do quite frequently, I like to come in here and create a custom effect or title or something along those lines and it just dramatically increases my workflow efficiency. So today we're actually going to be creating a title so that I can show you reason number two why you really need motion. So let's go ahead and jump in. So if we select the final cut title, I will push open. So what we've got here is the basic text that it adds. And I almost always just go ahead and delete that. And we have our title background. Now, sometimes you want to leave the title background if you want to affect the video that is underneath your title. However, if you don't want to affect that video, you can also delete that as well. Today, I'm going to show you how you can actually create a little logo for your videos using the titles with some basic animation. So the first thing we want to do is push command I to import and we will bring in our logo. Now let's say we want to add some animation. Well, normally in Final Cut Pro, you would have to go to your properties and actually animate the scale here, add a keyframe, move forward, add a keyframe, so on and so forth. And that works, but sometimes it's not very fluid. And that is where motion is extremely powerful. And that is because it has automated animations. So that is the second reason why you really need motion is all of the automated animation behaviors. So to do an automated animation, we're just gonna come up to our scale, click this down arrow, add parameter behavior and we are going to use overshoot. Overshoot is one of my most favorite animation behaviors in motion. With our overshoot selected, we can go up here to the start value and we want to set this to negative 100%. And that is because our icon here is at a full 100%. So we want to completely negate the scale factor of our icon. Over time, you can see that the animation is going to automatically play out on our icon here. However, it's taking a very, very long time to play out. And that is because it is happening over the duration of our overshoot layer here down in our timeline. So to shorten it, go ahead and just find about, you know, a second or so and push O and immediately this will be shortened. So the animation happens much faster. And you'll see it's already got this nice bungee look to it without me having to actually know any animation principles. So that's super nice. We can also change the ramp duration, acceleration cycles. So if I set this to maybe one cycle and drag up our acceleration to a full 100% and we play back, you can see a dramatic difference in the animation type. Another thing we can do is if I come up here to our group and I'm gonna scale this down, maybe we'll go to 40%. You can add in a lot of different animation types for your text. So let's just add some text here. Let's say we wanna have like a fancy little animation that we use very frequently in our videos. So we've got our text here. We can go up to behaviors, find our different text parameters here. And I'm just gonna go from text basic. We could do something like substitute in is actually pretty cool. So now as I play this, you can see that it automatically does the animation. And this is actually kind of a complex animation with the text, it's changing throughout the different letters until it gets to the correct letter. So motion automatically does all of this for us. We can go to the end here. We could add in a few more animation types. Let's say we want to do just a regular animation. We could add in a keyframe, go to the end and zero it out. And then we could push command eight to see our keyframe editor. And we can actually change this to a Bezier curve which is so nice. It's something you cannot do in Final Cut Pro to get a really smooth animation of our logo popping out. 
So after I've done all of this animation types, I can actually just push Command S and this will publish this very title into Final Cut Pro so that I can just drop it on my projects very quickly. The next thing I want to show in motion is motion tracking. I have a bunch of tutorials on this subject in motion. We can just take our video in motion, go up to behaviors, motion tracking, analyze motion. That'll give you this red X and you can just find a point of high contrast. So I'll just come to the middle of my X here. We'll go to the inspector and if you need to change any of the settings you can come down here by pushing the show button here. And now after that we can just push analyze. Five hours later. So I have this motion tracked sequence here and now we could just say let's add in and maybe big old shape here and we could turn it red so we can really see it. Then we can go into our behaviors motion tracking match move and we can just drag this analyze motion into there. So now our object is going to follow whatever our camera is doing. So this is just a handy extra feature that is in motion. While there are better motion trackers out there, it's really nice to have access within an Apple based software. So the fourth reason I think you really need motion is particle emitters. They are so handy to have. You can animate them with music using motion. I have a tutorial on that if you want to check it out on my channel. I'll just give you a quick rundown of how the particle emitters work. So we'll just select our rectangle tool here and we can get rid of the outline there. If we select our rectangle, we can push E for emitter or you can also come up here and push make particles. And already you can see it's starting to make the particles. It might not seem like much yet, but if we change the shape to something like a wave and then we can change the amplitude a bit and the frequency, we could change the birth rate, birth rate randomness, life and the life randomness. We can change the speed so they spread out much further. We could change the color over here to, I actually like colorize over life so they'll start to fade to a dark blue and then we could change it to an additive blend so you can actually see some of the other particles happening behind each other and we can change the speed randomness quite a bit there. If you are working with a 3D scene, you can actually make these 3D, which is really nice. So many different settings, the spin randomness, the scale randomness, all of it. And then if you wanted to, you could animate the birth rate. If you click on this down arrow, add parameter behavior audio, and I have a tutorial on that for animating this to different audio elements or you could attach it to a motion tracker and you could create smoke emitters, all sorts of things all within motion. The fifth and final reason, there is far better stabilization features in motion. So you can do the typical stabilization that's built into Final Cut Pro, but what I'm gonna show you is something even cooler. So we can select our clip here. We can go up to behaviors, motion tracking, and choose stabilize. And again, here you can have it analyzed just like your average shot. But what I like to do is use the tracker here and just like the tracker that I showed a little bit earlier and we'll just get it into a rough placement there. So now we can analyze one eternity later. So it's gone through and tracked everything. And as you can see, if I play this back, the whole video is actually moving along with her head, which is really cool because you can get that Beats by Dre look. So what we can actually do is come here to the borders and we can have it auto zoom for us. And then let's go ahead and move it up a bit. And so if I play back, you can see it's perfectly tracking her. So you could definitely do that and track it to an earbud or something like that and get a very similar effect to that Beats by Dre look. Thank you again, Dylan, for having me on your channel. It was such a pleasure. And I hope that you found some useful info in this video. If you wanna check out my channel, I cover a lot of Motion 5 content along with Final Cut Pro content. So with all that being said, I really hope that I get to see you there. Peace. Seriously guys, if you haven't checked out his channel and you want to get better at video editing and animation, do yourself a solid and watch some of Dylan's videos. A cool one that I enjoyed recently was how to animate like Vox. I will also be appearing on Dylan's channel where I will be going over three easy color grading steps for fantastic looking videos. Check that out when you can and I will see you next week. Enjoy your day.